I wish I was in school. If only I had a math test today. I'll stay after class. I'll clean the chalkboard. I wish I was in school. School ends, but free lunches for your kids don't have to. Find your local food bank at feedingamerica.org slash summer meals for help. Being prepared is a part of who you are, but it's especially important in the case of a disaster. Be informed about possible emergencies in your area. Make a plan that covers where you'll go in an emergency. Build a kit with the things you need to survive. There's no one more capable of planning for your situation than you. Start your plan today. Go to ready.gov slash my plan. Welcome to TV20 News, we are Cleveland, I'm Leah Hasledge. The city of Cleveland received a multi-million dollar grant from the federal government to fight the dangers of lead-based paint in our community. The city of Cleveland received a check for $3.4 million so they can continue their battle against the dangers of lead-based paint. Officials from the Department for Housing and Urban Development stated the hazards of lead-based paint and lead-based poisoning can cause environmental hazards to children who may live in homes built prior to 1978. HUD officials believe their efforts will significantly improve the health of the community and quality of the housing stock in the Cleveland area. The technology and knowledge to deal with lead hazard is out here and it's incumbent upon us that we have the research and information and that we do more to make sure that our children are free from the impact of lead poisoning during their most formative years. This is a nationwide uh, issue and, and um, this money will help someone but it's nowhere near what we would need to really remedy the problem but I want to tell you how much I appreciate uh, the local office and HUD for this uh, grant and it will help to uh, really provide a quality of life for families and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. If you would like more information about the lead hazard control program, the phone number is 216-664-4021. A new batch of EMTs and paramedics are on the streets of Cleveland as the Division of EMS just graduated its recent class. As the ceremony began, Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson swore in the eager cadets. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution and laws of the State of Ohio, the Charter and Ordinances of the City of Cleveland, obey the rules, regulations, and orders of the Division of Emergency Medical Service and discharge the duties of my office with professionalism and character to the best of my knowledge and ability, providing quality care to all those in need. So help me God. Congratulations. Ward 15 Councilman and Public Safety Chair Matt Zone was first to offer his congratulations to the newly sworn in EMTs. I know it's been a long time. Uh, you've been through a tremendous amount of testing and practicing, uh, but you now are among the most prepared uh, life and first responder protectors uh, in the United States. 
TV20 would like to congratulate all of the new EMTs and paramedics for all of their hard work and wish them the best on their new career. The Cleveland Police are looking for Northeast Ohio's finest to join the force. The department is hiring lateral transfers, which means they are looking for officers who are OPADA certified and have been an Ohio law enforcement officer for some time. The department is urging candidates to take advantage of this opportunity. The Cleveland Division of Police is the largest division of police in, the, in Northeast Ohio. So that means that we have a lot of different opportunities within the division, both for promotion and just to be able to do different jobs. So you can see behind us that we have officers from the SWAT unit, the K-9 unit, the Scientific Investigation Unit, detectives, members of Basic Patrol, the bike unit, motorcycles, horses, we have a little of everything. There are a lot of opportunities to move around and do different things in police. And we want to make sure that officers within the state of Ohio, especially right now, are aware of those opportunities. The Cleveland Police Department is looking to hire more than 140 officers within the next few years. They have to have three years of experience, full-time experience, within the last four years. And they will go to www.governmentjobs.com forward slash careers forward slash Cleveland. And that's where the link is to apply. Well, we hope to get a class of lateral officers of at least 25. Currently, we're at 1,455 officers, and we hope to get to 1,601 within the next three years, but five years uh, is, the, is the goal but we would love it if we could get there in three years, so. If you have any questions regarding the police hiring process, please call 216-623-5135. The Ohio Municipal Clerks Association held their annual meeting at the Doubletree Hotel in downtown Cleveland to nearly 100 clerks from across Ohio. Pat Britt, the clerk of Cleveland City Council, introduced Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson and said that the mayor taught her a great many things about working in public office. He really helped me understand that being in public office is about serving people. So if you didn't want to serve people, don't think about this uh, profession. Don't think about uh, public service uh, in any realm, whether you're a clerk, whether you are a council member or a mayor. So he taught me the ropes in that. As he welcomed the group, Mayor Jackson reflected on how his time in council gave him great appreciation for the work the clerks do. That's when I really understood when I was council president what is the duty and responsibility of a clerk because a good clerk will make your job much easier, much easier. And uh, you have to deal with all the personalities of of, uh, of uh, elected officials, and most of us have enormous egos. <laughs> For more information on the Ohio Municipal Clerks Association, visit their website at omcs.us. It was a beautiful morning for a stroll as area senior citizens stopped by Historic League Park to take part in Cleveland Department of Aging Summer Walking Program. Department Director Mary McNamara says this is all about moving and staying active during the summer months. This is our second summer walk series in the series. So we're here at League Park and one of our hopes was just that we would create neighborhood walks for seniors to gather together, meet new friends, get information about safety, and then hopefully keep it going after we leave. Shirlene Wright and her friends know it's important for seniors to walk as much as they can every day. It's very important for seniors because uh, the more you move, the better you feel and the more you want to do things. If you sit and not move or anything, I mean, you just sort of like you, you, you I don't, you, you dwelt away, you, you know, you, what, what? give me a word. Yeah, you stepping up. So, you know, it's important. It really is important for us to move. Ward 7 Councilman T.J. Dow says this walk is just one of the many programs and events the City of Cleveland offers to its senior citizen population. This is a city-owned facility and we open it up for the seniors to come out and walk and exercise. Um, I was talking to another senior, she's going to a recreation center to do a swimming class and yoga. So there's just a lot of things um, that we have here at the City of Cleveland just to offer seniors and this is just one, one thing that we all we do to have them out here walking and exercising. So. 
The neighborhood walk at League Park served as a great way to educate seniors on hazards they may face every day, including slips, trips, and falls. That's where Janet Montoya of Metro Health comes in. Falls are the third cause of death among the elderly, and 65% of the falls occur in the home due to poor lighting and area rugs. As I mentioned earlier, we're distributing and we're giving away uh, Metro Health branded LED night lights. One, so they don't have to replace the battery. It's cost effective for them, but as I mentioned, 65% of the falls do occur in the home due to poor lighting and area rugs. So we're hoping to help seniors age in place and stay safer um, in their homes for a longer period of time. Director McNamara says these neighborhood walks all lead up to one big event later this summer. This will all um, come together for our big senior walk, which is on Thursday, September 7th, on malls B and C, rain or shine. If it's raining, we walk inside public hall, but that's one of our favorite events. Usually about 1,000 people come to it. This is our 13th annual. If you have a loved one and are concerned about them tripping or falling, Janet Montoya of Metro Health recommends putting more night lights throughout the house that will turn on automatically at night. She also recommends securing area rugs to the floor with double-sided tape. For more information, call the Department of Aging at 216-664-2833. Well, don't change that channel. We're going to be right back with more TV20 News. Open-minded people. The spirit of innovation. Passion. Action. Rock and roll. Cleveland. 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 We are Cleveland. We are Welcome back to TV20 News. Residents in the Slavic Village neighborhood received free health services at the Southeast Community Health Expo. Hundreds came out to take advantage of the free health screenings at the Health Expo at John Adams High School. Residents who attended the free interactive health expo received a variety of quality health care services at no cost for the whole family. Services included medical, financial, educational, legal, and social services, plus sports physicals. Organizers say people need to attend these free health care opportunities. You know what, because a lot of people are struggling with health care and getting in and getting screened. And what happens to a lot of people, they have a tough time navigating the system. So we want them to know that we are here to help them navigate the system, to get through the system, to get health care, get screenings, whatever they may need. Gives the community an opportunity to get a checkup from the head to their toes. I mean, that's what it really comes down to. It's an opportunity to come to one place one location at one time and get everything free across the board. Besides the health care services, the expo also gave out free haircuts and fresh produce. The National Black Prosecutors Association held their 34th annual conference right here at the Weston in downtown Cleveland. President Will Jordan says that the association works for the advancement of blacks as prosecutors. Founded in 1983, the, the purpose was to try to begin to try to network uh, black prosecutors across the nation. Uh, when it was actually founded, uh, Norm Early, he realized that the issue was, well, that there was absolutely no actual place where you can go to find out well, where are the people that are like me across this country. Um, and you can imagine in the 80s, we didn't have many. And so it started off with him getting on the phone and calling different offices across the country. 
Conference Chairman Aquela Jordan, who is also the assistant Cuyahoga County prosecutor, says she's been working to bring the conference to Cleveland for several years. We started this process a few years ago. We placed a bid in, submitted all our information, worked with the national office, and eventually we won the bid. So once we won the bid to bring it here, that's when all the fun started. We got to begin the planning and working out all the details. Well, welcoming the MVPA to Cleveland, Mayor Frank Jackson, a former assistant city prosecutor himself, told the crowd to never forget where they came from or how they got there. And because of affirmative action, I was able to go to law school. And because of that, ultimately, I wound up in this position. And, and it's not that I'm so good at this or so great or so much smarter than anyone else. Uh, it's that people have made it possible for somebody to be in the position I am. And ladies and gentlemen, I am telling you, someone made it possible for you too. And so you owe a debt just like I do. And it's our responsibility to pay that debt, and that means use proper discretion. Proper discretion, not bureaucratic uh, 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 functions, but proper discretion when we do our job. Along with Mayor Jackson, the conference kickoff featured many other great speakers, including Cuyahoga County Prosecutor Michael O'Malley, Police Chief Calvin Williams, and Congresswoman Marsha Fudge. It is important that you indeed are agents of social change that your advocacy, your good judgment, and your compassion are known everywhere. So keep on doing what it is you are doing, because without you, without you, I don't know where my people go. Yes, we make mistakes. Yes, we are overrepresented in the system. But some can be saved. And it is up to you to try to make that decision. I know it's hard to play God. But just take a chance sometime and save some kid who deserves a second chance. Thanks, everybody. For more information on the National Black Prosecutors Association, visit their website at blackprosecutors.org. Well, the sights and sounds of Latin culture filled downtown Cleveland for the first Fiesta Latina in the Square. TV20's Enrique Correa was at Public Square and has more from this event. We're here at the first annual Fiesta Latina in the Square, where for the whole day you're going to get to experience some Latin flavor. People couldn't resist the Latin beats at Fiesta Latina in the square. People were spontaneously dancing on the grassy lawn, and if you didn't know how to salsa, they were even giving out dance lessons. And what do you think of an event like this for Cleveland to bring out all the Hispanic cultures? It's amazing because not only we celebrate our contributions to the United States, but other people can learn of our roots and our flavor and all that we had to offer. <laughs> All these colorful flags represent the multiple Latino cultures that came together for the first fiesta in the square. The event was sponsored by Cuyahoga Arts and Culture and Julia de Burgos Cultural Arts Center. Julia de Burgos Executive Director Leticia Lopez says it was a proud day to showcase the Latin experience. Our culture is amazing and beautiful. We want to share that culture with everyone. We want to um, be united here today and just to, to have a great time and, and show the world who we are. And of course you can't have a Latin fiesta without some traditional foods from vendors at the event. Oh, I love it. It's amazing. We should have more and more often. <laughs> Maybe one or two a year instead of just one. And what are we going to see on the menu from Panchitas today? Uh, today we have leg quarters with a homemade barbecue sauce that I make. We got homemade empanadillas. We got homemade... Uh, Puerto Rican nachos, and that is, uh, we use totones instead of a nacho chip, and we put certain condiments over it. It's made with pork or with chicken, your choice. We're going to see a lot of Puerto Rican flavor today. A whole lot, plus we got totones with some garlic aioli that we homemade also. I had such a great time here. I can't wait to have this event again next year. At Public Square, I'm Enrique Correa, TV20, we are Cleveland. The Tri-C Creative Arts Dance Academy presented their New Beginning Summer Intensive Concert at the Simon and Rose Mandel Theater at Cuyahoga Community College's Eastern Campus. <laughs> Director of the Creative Arts Academy, Emanuela Frisconi, tells us more about the students performing, which are a part of a three-week summer intensive camp. The students that are participating are students that not always 
uh, get in class throughout the year, but we have the majority of them take regular classes with us at the Metro campus. And then we have also students coming from the community centers, which we started uh, in, in giving classes there in the past, uh, in the spring semester, and they will continue throughout the year. And then we have students that are coming from different towns from uh, United States. So we have students from Denver, from uh, Alabama, from uh, Dayton, Ohio, from Washington, DC. And so the level that we have and we work on throughout those three weeks is been skyrocketing, skyrocketing high tonight. Uh, we have three levels of classes for dance uh, in introduction to dance, beginner level one, beginner level two, and intermediate. Usually students uh, do a placement ahead of time so to see the level that they are. However, it's completely open to everybody who is an interested in the art or want to learn how to dance uh, through the community sites that we are, thanks to the support of the Cleveland Foundation. We are at the Clark Recreation Center in a wonderful partnership with the city. And then we are also at the St. Luke Manor in collaboration with Boys and Girls Club and also at the uh, Heritage View uh, site of CMH CMHA. Thousands of people flock to one of Cleveland's historic neighborhoods for their annual event that showcases their best. TV20's Enrique Correa has more. Leah, we're here at the 15th annual Taste of Tremont where people get to eat, drink, and have a great time. <laughs> the Taste of Tremont was rocking as thousands packed Professor Avenue for the annual food festival. The Taste of Tremont showcases the best of Tremont's food, art, and entertainment all on one street. I love it. We've been coming here the last five years. We perch up here every year and we stay for the whole day. And you? My name is Abby. This is fantastic. This is great. Beautiful day, beautiful food, beautiful people. What's your favorite dish you've eaten so far? Well, I haven't eaten anything yet, but I look at those ribs, I'm going for the ribs. Tremont is home to some of the best chefs in Northeast Ohio, and they say they enjoy coming out of their restaurants and mixing it up with the people. It is the best Cleveland food festival of the year. Where else can you go? Two, three, four dollar taste, dancing, drinks, DJs, extended bars. Uh, I've, this is my 15th year, 17th year open, so I'm just happy to be here. Why well, I love it, man, it's a beautiful day. Look at it, look at all the people around us, man, it's awesome. Every year it gets bigger, better, can't beat it. You know what, I look forward to this day all year. It's, it's almost better than Christmas. It's a beautiful day, it's packed with people, excitement. It's, it's great to be in Tremont. It's amazing that it is a neighborhood. It's our neighborhood. Um, every single business is putting their best foot forward. Um, when people come out, the restaurants are trying to give the people a little taste of what they do in the hopes that they can come back and enjoy what we do. Um, so I think it's unique in that there's so much neighborhood pride. There were more than 30 food vendors lined up Professor Avenue. One restaurant that was new to this year's taste was Mabel's Barbecue, and they had plenty of people lining up for their tasty ribs and slaw. The uh, turnout today is great. Um, seems to be a little bit bigger, I think, than uh, the, the years past that I've been involved in it. They love it. Those people that couldn't get downtown, uh, they're, they're coming at us pretty hard today. We're I had such a great time here, I can't wait till next year. At the Taste of Tremont, I'm Enrique Correa, TV20, we are Cleveland. Thanks for watching TV20 News, we are Cleveland, I'm Leah Haslidge. Up next we'll have Christian Patterson with the Inside Sports Report.